Hey guys, and how's it going? Got some unfortunate news for you guys today. For those of you who are fans of the 317 and want to see it run again. Um, on these 317s, the KT17 motors they had, the engines supposedly had a bad reputation where if you're on an incline, one of the, the oil, it didn't really have a very good oil distribution and one side of the motor would get oil while the other side wouldn't and it would end up um, a rod would end up blowing and unfortunately I think that is what happened with us um, I started getting into this tractor and we got pretty far into it and we got to checking the solenoid the solenoid was good which really raised some suspicion for me because usually the solenoid's not good on something I end up getting, I got to replace it. So I pulled the spark plugs out of it and went to test it for spark. This side over here had compression to it and you could feel air coming out the spark plug hole. This side on this, this, however, I put my finger over it, no compression whatsoever. I let off of it and I put my finger over it, no compression whatsoever, no air coming out of it at all. So it raises my suspicion and it makes me suspect and think a rod was blown. This rod on this side of the engine I think is blown, broke, something like that. So um I don't know what I want to do with it from here. I don't think I'm going to go any further into it. Unfortunately, that is where we are, I guess. I think I want to go on ahead and take the head off of it and just see what happened. Maybe we can, maybe it'll just be a stuck valve, but I doubt that. I did look down in there with a flashlight and turn the engine over and I didn't see the piston moving back. So I've got a suspicion the rod is blown. The exhaust valve was moving. I could see the exhaust valve. I could not see the intake valve, but I think the intake valve was moving as well. So I've gotten a suspicion and I just kind of pieced it back together after I saw that. Um, I went on one of the Facebook groups I'm in and kind of asked around about it, about it, asking people if anybody would be interested in it or trading me a non-running 140 or something like that for it. I hate to just give up on it like that, but when an engine throws a rod, usually the rod ends up taking the motor out with it, which really surprised me. This engine has oil in it if it slung a rod, because if it slung, usually when they sling a rod, it goes through the block, and if it's in the bottom of the motor, it'll leak all the oil out of it. I didn't see any evidence anywhere on it of it blowing a rod, so I wonder if the rod just broke, didn't cause any damage, or it took a chunk of the cylinder out. So, again, it's not, a rebuild kit for one of these engines range from $200, I think, to a little bit more than that. So, the cheapest one that I saw was $250, so... This motor is not really that worth that to me to sit down and try to get going again. So it's not that hard to tear into and get the motor going. All I'd have to do is replace the rod and replace the gasket for back here and also replace the head gasket. Plus I'd have to take the motor out of it, disconnect that, uh, disconnect the drive shaft. I did test the hydrostatic, however, it does work. I put it in forwards and turn the key a little bit and it moved. Put it back in neutral, didn't notice any creep. Took it, moved it back, cranked the motor over and it moved, so that was good. Um, I think this is the end of the 317. I don't know what I wanna do with it. I'm thinking about going around and taking all these caps off of it, off the hydraulic ports and keeping them. That's probably what I'm going to end up doing. I'd really like to keep this uh, rear hydraulic setup, but that's probably going to be the worth of the machine, what makes the machine worth my, um, worth 
trading for or selling. I've had a couple people interested in it, but I'd really rather get a 140 out of it instead of cash. Um, I bought the thing for a 140. I'm not going to get as much out of it as I paid. So I paid $300 for it, which I didn't think was half bad. And it started making me wonder seeing how bad a condition it is if it was bought as a parts donor for the... This was my buddy's. He bought this, and I think it came with the 317 he's got. I'm starting to wonder if he bought, if it was a parts donor with the one that he has. It had some pieces that one needed, so they were swapped between each other. But that really raises some suspicion. He said the tractor was parked about seven years. It's been about... Uh, seven years since it's run last so it had a snow plow on it at some point judging by the marks on the frame right there and over here and I think at some point it had a three point on it because or something back here because it's got these rear hydraulics somebody put a trailer hitch on it it really made me wonder if a business had owned this at one point um I don't know. Made me wonder. So, I guess this is the end of the 317 chapter. I do want to pull that apart. However, I want to get into the motor and see what happened. If the valve is stuck, it's not going to hurt anything and it's not going to cost anything. If the valve's not stuck and it's the piston, oh well. Put the head back on, bolt it down, and just forget about it. So I guess that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the head off. We're going to take this shroud off and see what it looks like. Um, I really wouldn't mind taking that valve off of it right there. I did some research on this valve. I couldn't find one like it. Somebody I know said it looked like a homemade valve. I don't know if that's true or not, but it might be because I haven't seen any like it. So, I guess that's it for this poor thing. <laughs> well, technically, I only paid $25 for it. I bought a Craftsman. I don't remember what it was, but I paid $25 for it. Traded that off for a trailer. Ended up selling the trailer for $200. I bought the 212 that I sold to get this for $200. I sold the 212 for $300 and then I paid the $300 for this. So technically I only paid $25 for it. Now it's an investment as you do something with your investment the price goes up like you saw there that's kind of what I was doing. That's was that was the idea when I got that that craftsman get it running sell it and it ended up going for a trailer which I didn't think was half bad and I did use it and then it bought me a 212 and then the 212 got me this so it went somewhere so I don't know what I'm gonna do with it I think I'm just gonna let it go up the river who uh, I do have a couple people who have already messaged me about it like I said so it's probably gonna end up going to one of them again I don't know so I guess that is it. So thank you guys for watching. Oh, we're going to take that head off. So let me put you guys in the stand. I think these are probably 7 16 Once I do that, we'll pull the head off, see what it looks like. And well, that depends on what way the... Okay, I think that goes behind this tin and behind or on top of this tin. Okay, that might not be terrible. So I guess let's take the head off of it. Hell with it. And let's just see what it looks like. Let's go on ahead and take a look at this. Let me make sure you guys can see. Yeah, you can see. Let's go on ahead and take a look at this cooler and see what we can find.
that might be a, a good thing or a bad thing. Seems way too loose to be normal. Could have even just overheated and blown a rod that way looking inside of there. Let me give it a look through quick and make sure there's nothing dead in there. Yeah, see, like I thought. So, well. Definitely is not supposed to be sticking out that far. Yeah, no stuck valves, so it's definitely not that. I mean, I'm gonna try and turn it over. Maybe we'll see something, but we probably won't. Actually, we need to turn it over with the starter. I can do this. Let's watch and see what we get. Yeah, see, that piston's not moving, as you can see. Yeah, I kind of figured it was a blown rod, so. Well, okay, well. Don't look too bad under there, though. Let me grab a flashlight and look underneath that shroud before I bring you guys in to look. Well, that's a front bolt. Oh, there's nothing under here. I don't think you guys would want to see anything. Not as bad as I thought it was. Looked a lot worse when... There's a piece of something right here. Let me look. What is this? can't get it out. That looks like a filter. Oh, that's that piece I was looking at earlier. Right there is a piece of plastic. I can't get it out. But I don't think it's going to hurt anything being in there. I don't see any cracks. So, I guess it might not have taken the... It might not have taken the engine with it. I don't know again, so... Well... I guess this is where we're going to end the video. This is kind of a what happened to style of video. So I guess we kind of looked at it and saw what happened. The piston is stuck. We can try and move it. I don't know if I want to though. Yeah, see it does move. So that's as far in as I want to put it. I don't want it to go in too far because I don't want it to smack on the the crank so okay well I think we figured out what the problem with it is now it's uh, it's a bro it's a broken rod unfortunately I would pull the piston out but I really don't want to I'm just gonna button it all right back up so I guess that is it it's got a lot smaller of a piston than what I was expecting I was expecting that to be a lot bigger hmm. oh well all right well Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Hope you learned something from this video. I know that I really didn't do much and it wasn't worth your time. But I guess you get to see taking the head off a, K7, a KT-17 and looking at the piston. So, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.